deep in the jungle, a tourist named Sarah found herself injured, alone, and vulnerable, unexpectedly, a massive gorilla appeared, shocking the entire village with its actions, Sarah Jenkins had always been fascinated by wildlife and the serenity of the forest, however, as a city resident, she had never fully experienced being completely isolated and immersed in nature until that moment, to be honest, she was missing her trusted GPS more than she expected. Poor cell service forced her to use a compass for navigation, a skill she had only recently learned, which meant she was undoubtedly lost. The enchanting sounds of birds and the thickening misty air fueled her desire to continue. She should have stopped her journey earlier, but the beauty of the landscape compelled her to go further. At one point, a few miles into her trek, she came across villagers returning from a nearby stream. They exchanged greetings and she mentally marked the stream as a makeshift landmark, a reference point for her way back. However, she soon realized she might not be able to find it again. Deeper into the jungle, Sarah felt increasingly tired and was now certain she had been walking in circles for some time, depleting her energy, while taking a brief pause to drink from her water bottle. A sudden, menacing growl nearby froze her in place, her eyes widening as she listened intently. Her instincts were on high alert for potential danger but as she listened more closely, the growls seemed pained, evoking empathy rather than fear. Sarah found herself at a crossroads, torn between the primal urge to flee for her safety and the realization that something in the forest needed her help, her adventurous spirit, undeterred by the uncertainty. Whispered that this might be the moment she had been seeking, the chance to make a meaningful contribution to the untamed world she had ventured into. As the growls intensified, Sarah rose and began walking towards the source of the distressed sounds. Grappling with the impending encounter, finally stepping out from the shadows, she caught sight of the creature causing such distress. A gasp escaped her lips as she witnessed the horrifying scene before her, a fully grown silverback gorilla. A majestic beast, ensnared in a cruel trap, struggling against the unyielding grip, the gravity of the situation hit Sarah suddenly as she stared at the enormous animal in front of her, desperately needing help. The gorilla, a majestic wild creature, was now helpless, dependent on her next move. She faced a tough choice, to aid the majestic animal in escaping or to walk away, in the perilous confines of the jungle. Sarah was well aware of the sinister poachers who had set the trap, yet, Humans were not the only danger, the gorilla's reaction to her was also a risk. Sarah believed the gorilla understood that humans were the reason for its predicament. Could it react violently, mistaking her for an enemy? As she pondered her situation, the gorilla emitted a distinctive growl that seemed to connect its plight with a human-like desperation, a cry for help that resonated through the jungle. Sarah's heart sank. As she approached, her foot accidentally snapped a twig. The sound echoing loudly, the gorilla quickly turned its gaze towards her, startling Sarah. It looked both angry and desperate, making her reconsider her approach. Yet, when the gorilla growled again, its eyes softened, revealing a moment of mutual vulnerability. Sarah saw in those eyes a silent plea for freedom from the entangling trap, despite knowing she should back away. She couldn't leave the gorilla to the mercy of the cruel poachers. Filled with resolve, she moved forward. Pulling out a small knife, the only tool she had, the gorilla, noticing the knife's metallic shine, became more aggressive, but undeterred. Sarah spoke in soothing tones and made gentle gestures to show her peaceful intent. Slowly, the gorilla's suspicion eased as Sarah, kneeling on one knee, began the careful work of cutting the net. Each slice was deliberate, a careful attempt to earn the trust of a creature driven by its instincts. The gorilla's growls turned into a tense silence as Sarah steadily freed it from the entangling net. When the net finally parted, the gorilla burst out with a surge of primal energy, now liberated. As the dominant silverback began to pace aggressively, a chill ran down Sarah's spine. She realized this display was a show of dominance, a reminder that despite her assistance, it was still a formidable being in its own right. Suddenly, she remembered that direct eye contact might be perceived as a threat by Alpha Silverbacks. As a result, she looked away and bowed her head to avoid the gorilla's gaze. In the tense silence, the gorilla, clearly distressed, began to assert its dominance by standing on its hind legs and pounding its chest with powerful swats, the primal thuds resonating through the jungle, as the imposing animal unleashed its energy. Sarah cautiously maintained a safe distance. Aware of the formidable force she had inadvertently provoked, eventually, the atmosphere softened, the gorilla calmed and settled back on the forest floor, it made a soothing sound, 
a gesture that reassured Sarah there was no need for fear. Intrigued, she watched as the gorilla extended its forearms, inviting her to come closer. As she approached, Sarah noticed a bracelet on its right wrist. It displayed a single word, Jabari. When she spoke the name, the gorilla nodded in recognition. Sarah pondered why a wild gorilla would wear a bracelet with a name, speculating that Jabari might have once been part of a conservation program and named before being released back into the wild. She rummaged through her bag for the bananas she had gathered, offering them to Jabari, who enthusiastically accepted the fruit, creating a moment of connection. With a final glance over its shoulder, Jabari stood, turned away from Sarah, and disappeared into the dense jungle, dumbfounded. With her heart still racing, Sarah sat down to reflect on the extraordinary encounter. She had entered the wild and interacted with a creature she had only seen on television in a way she could never have anticipated, looking at the torn net, a tangible reminder of her role in Jabari's newfound freedom. She felt exhausted and overwhelmed by the surreal experience, as Sarah considered finding her way back. She imagined possibly encountering a villager on the way, yet. As she deliberated her next steps, she realized that villagers might not be the only humans she would meet. The poachers who had set the trap could have heard Jabari's unique calls and might be heading her way. In a sudden rush of urgency, Sarah stood up quickly, grabbed her bag, and as she took her first step, her fears began to manifest. The faint rustling in the jungle signaled impending danger, and at this critical moment in her adventure, Sarah braced herself for the approaching challenges. The sound of footsteps grew louder indicating the approach of menacing men eager to check their trap, the poachers, intent on capturing Jabari, were swiftly nearing, and soon five formidable figures emerged from the shadows, their machetes glinting in the sunlight, their piercing stares landed on Sarah, their faces showing surprise at her solitary presence in the wilderness, one poacher checked the net and realized it had trapped something significant, as their eyes met Sarah's, they understood she had released their catch. Confrontationally, one poacher demanded to know if she had freed the ensnared creature, another, less confrontational, suggested that Sarah, being a woman, was an unlikely rescuer of a wild beast, he speculated that the noises they had heard earlier in the jungle pointed to a dangerous encounter, one she would not have survived had she been the one to free the animal, however, the group's leader dismissed this notion, pointing to the knife on Sarah's belt and the lack of any injuries on her. He noted the disorganized footprints around her, clear evidence of her interference with their captured prey. Realizing Sarah's role in the gorilla's escape, the poacher's anger intensified as they noticed Jabari's distinctive footprints nearby, a damning testament to her actions. Trying to conceal her fear, Sarah stood still, tears streaming down her face despite her efforts to stop them. Without mercy, the men tied her hands and loaded her onto the trunk of their vehicle. Leaving no chance for escape, the atmosphere tensed as the poachers prepared to transport Sarah to their camp. In the confined space of the vehicle, Sarah strained to hear the poachers' whispered discussions. Fear engulfed Sarah as she realized the gravity of her predicament. While eavesdropping on the poachers, she learned a distressing truth about Jabari. Her heart sank upon discovering that his family, including his two brothers, had been seized by these same captors. Jabari was the sole survivor, rescued by a wildlife organization, rehabilitated over several months, and then reintroduced into the wild. Once back in his natural setting, Jabari started to disrupt the poacher's camp in an effort to locate his brothers, creating turmoil and confusion, a fact Sarah now fully comprehended. Caught in a dangerous trap set by those exploiting the intelligence and familial bonds of the animals she aimed to protect, Sarah knew she had to act. Concealed in her back pocket was a penknife, an essential tool for survival. With her hands tied behind her, she skillfully retrieved the knife, careful not to draw attention during a critical moment when the poacher's vehicle navigated a sharp, winding turn. Capitalizing on this opportunity, she quietly cut through the ropes binding her hands, timing her escape impeccably. She leapt from the moving vehicle as it rounded the curve, hitting the ground running. Unprepared for her audacious escape, the poachers hastily pursued her down the hill. Driven by adrenaline, Sarah sprinted as fast as she could, but a misstep caused her to tumble down the slope, blurring her vision as she rolled into unconsciousness. Meanwhile, the lead poacher evaluated the situation and called off his men, possibly recognizing the formidable terrain and the daunting challenges posed by the jungle. He decided to abandon Sarah. 
Convinced she wouldn't survive on her own in the wilderness, this unexpected act of mercy left Sarah unconscious at the bottom of the hill, her fate teetering between the peril of the poachers and the raw embrace of the wild. Back in the village, the passing of time became increasingly agonizing for Coco, the guide assigned to Sarah. His impatience was palpable as hours turned into more hours with no sign of the tourist, prompting him to take action, realizing the gravity of her disappearance. He informed the village, after regaining consciousness in the wilderness, Sarah found herself by a rock that had stopped her harsh fall. Feeling weak and disoriented, she realized she had a severe injury on her leg and was bleeding heavily, gathering all her strength. She managed to sit up against the firm rock and assess her condition, grateful to have escaped from poachers. Sarah reached for her bag and luckily found some water and a few snacks, starving. She quickly consumed the snacks and drank all the water, slightly restoring her energy. She used a napkin from her bag to create a makeshift bandage for her leg to try to stop the bleeding, although it had already stopped. In a desperate attempt to get help, Sarah reached for her broken phone only to find it was non-functional, leaving her isolated and without support, determined. She decided to head back to the village despite her injured leg which was a significant challenge and caused severe pain every time she tried to stand, as Sarah considered her limited options. The sound of rustling in the bushes heightened her anxiety, fearing the arrival of a wild predator drawn by the smell of her blood or perhaps the same group of men she had escaped from earlier. Feeling vulnerable, exhausted, and injured, she felt defenseless against any potential threat. The rustling and faint growls came closer, causing Sarah to close her eyes in fear. Bracing herself for what seemed like an inevitable encounter with a predator, suddenly, she felt a tap on her shoulder, cautiously opening her eyes. She was surprised to see Jabari standing before her. The gorilla she had once rescued from a poacher's trap had now become a surprising and unexpected ally, uncertain of Jabari's intentions. Sarah remembered overhearing the poachers mention that he was a trained gorilla who had spent time with humans at a rehabilitation facility and might have learned ways to communicate using improvised sign language. Using sign language, she conveyed her injuries and her need to return home. To her amazement, Jabari responded similarly, indicating his willingness to help. He gently lifted her and began to walk. Hours passed and night fell as they navigated the jungle. Recognizing a familiar stream from earlier in the day, Sarah realized they were nearing the village. However, their journey was abruptly stopped by the sudden appearance of torchlights piercing the darkness. Jabari, feeling threatened, gently set Sarah down and began to exhibit signs of aggression by beating his chest and pacing back and forth. As Sarah looked on in confusion, a search party led by her guide, Coco, came into view. Recognizing the lights as part of a rescue operation organized by the village chief, Jabari reacted defensively, mistaking the humans for poachers due to his previous bad encounters. Concerned that the situation might worsen, Sarah implored Coco and the team to withdraw, promising to soothe Jabari herself. As the team moved back, Sarah used sign language to calm Jabari, assuring him that the group was there to assist, understanding her. Jabari touched her palm tenderly in a silent goodbye before disappearing into the forest. Coco and the search team, intrigued by the profound connection between Sarah and the gorilla, moved in cautiously. They helped Sarah back to the village, where she was treated with local remedies for her injured leg and stayed for two weeks to recover. During her recovery, the village buzzed with excitement, eager to hear about her incredible adventure. Stories of her unique friendship with a gorilla had already begun to circulate among the villagers, once healed. Sarah shared her remarkable experience with the village chief and her guides. She recounted her encounter with Jabari and the looming danger of poachers. The villagers were amazed, finding it hard to fathom how a city girl had managed to collaborate with a wild gorilla in the depths of the jungle. As her story unfolded, it became clear that the poachers were a threat not only to the wildlife but also to the villagers themselves, realizing the gravity of the situation. The village chief acted promptly. He informed the authorities about the poacher's hideout and Sarah's escape route. The authorities responded quickly, raiding the hideout and capturing the poachers, effectively putting an end to their illegal activities. As the day of her departure back to the city drew near, Sarah felt a mix of emotions. She would miss the serenity of nature, the friendly faces, and the simplicity of village life. Sarah reflected on the warm-hearted villagers who had welcomed her with open arms during her stay. More importantly, she pondered the role her daring and courageous spirit had played in safeguarding the wildlife from poachers. As she prepared to depart the village, 
her thoughts were with Jabari, the gorilla who had been a key part of her remarkable adventure. With the threat from poachers now neutralized, Sarah envisioned a safer, better life for Jabari in the jungle. Which had previously been marred by danger, she experienced a sense of relief, picturing Jabari flourishing in the dense, wild forest, free from the imminent threat of those who would harm the wildlife for their own gain. What a wonderful conclusion. How would you react if you encountered a wild gorilla in the jungle? Would you have the courage to evade poachers as Sarah did? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.